So if you think you might be dealing with some type of bacterial overgrowth in your digestive tract, whether it's here in the stomach or maybe it's moved down here into the small intestine and there's a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO like all the cool kids have today, or these bad guys have moved down into the large intestine or what's referred to as our gut and created what they call a dysbiosis issue. So no matter where this bacterial overgrowth may be going on, in this video I'm going to help you understand a wide variety of health issues that can come about from this overgrowth scenario. You're going to be like, what? TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So some of the health issues that we're going to go over here today have the ability to be caused by other possible underlying causes as well. I just kind of want to go through these real quick and help you understand how a bacterial overgrowth can lead or create some of these problems. And just so you know that I didn't get this information out of a Spider-Man coloring book, in the description below this video I'm going to put links to some studies that you can dig into these topics a little bit different. And there'll be studies like this one on integrative therapies and anxiety with special emphasis on the gut microbiome, gastrointestinal microbiome and cholestasis or troubles that happen with the gallbladder, microbial dysbiosis in the gut drives systemic autoimmune diseases, altered gut microbiota composition associated with eczema, associations of the microbiome and esophageal disease, gut microbiome with depression, the gut microbiome and its role in obesity, gut microbiome and acute pancreatitis. So you can see that there's a wide variety of issues that can come about when we're looking at this bacterial overgrowth issue. So let's start up here and work our way down and let's first look at some acid reflux situations. And what goes on here is if bacteria comes into the stomach and kind of sets up camp where they really shouldn't be. We shouldn't have a lot of bacteria in the stomach or the small intestine. Most of our good bacteria should be here in the large intestine. So when we're looking at acid reflux, basically food comes in here and then this stomach makes this hydrochloric acid or HCl that's supposed to help us acidify that food so we can start that breakdown process. So the problem is this acid reflux is not really caused by too much stomach acid like advertisers want us to believe. It's usually caused by a malfunction with this lower esophageal sphincter or LES valve at the bottom of the esophagus. So it opens up so food can come back in and then it's supposed to close so this acidified product doesn't come back up and burn us. The problem is this LES valve is triggered by stomach acid. So if someone just has a small amount of stomach acid in there then it's not going to be enough to trigger this valve to close and then the small amount of acid they have is going to come back up and burn them and feel like it's a whole lot of acid. So when we're looking at bacteria in here, if they get in here and set up camp, well they also put off these gases and this waste just like any kind of living thing might do. So if there's a lot of gases in this stomach that really shouldn't be there, those gases create pressure that then pushes stuff back up even more aggressively and pushes that stomach acid up with it. Now here's another angle of that problem is that a lot of these bacteria that come in and set up camp, their waste product is alkaline. So they can further alkalize this stomach, restricting your ability to digest your food correctly, but also neutralizing more of the acid that you're making, leaving just a small amount in here. Remember, it's when there's only a small amount of acid in here that we really get this major reflux trouble. So there's this added pressure pushing things up, and there's the ability to reduce the amount of acid in the stomach where these bacterial overgrowth can really create this acid reflux situation. If we're looking at indigestion, indigestion as we talk about, oh that person's probably like burping and bloating and they're like cramping and they have nausea and all of this uncomfortable kind of situation going on in their digestive tract usually after they eat. And when we look at indigestion it's kind of telling you, look that's a lack of digestion. So that's usually a case where there's not enough stomach acid there to acidify that food and when the food can't be acidified correctly so that it can be broken down, it has to break down by like rotting and fermenting and that process creates a lot of gases and toxins as well. So now you have this situation where just the food is creating gases and making this pressure that kind of pushes out on our intestinal tract. If it's in here in the stomach, it pushes out on the stomach and creates bloating. If it's moved down here further, it's going to push out on the intestinal tract 
and create that kind of discomfort that could be a bloating or a cramping or just kind of nausea from all of this undigested stuff creating all of this toxic gook going on is really what's going on. We're supposed to break down that food. If you just put your food in a garbage can, a bunch of meat and stuff, and left it in there for a few days, when you open the lid, it's gonna be, ah, look at all this horrible stuff in there. That's kind of what goes on in the stomach when it's not being digested correctly. So remember, if someone doesn't have enough acid to acidify their food correctly, it could be because this bacteria has come in here and set up camp and they're neutralizing the acids that a person is making or there's some varmints that can restrict our ability to produce this hydrochloric acid. Next, let's look at a little bit of gallbladder action. And this gallbladder is here and its job is to take the bile that the liver makes. Bile is this soapy substance. So the liver makes that and then it sends it down to be stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. And then when food leaves the stomach and comes down here, this gallbladder's job is to squirt this alkaline bile down that helps us neutralize the acids that are leaving the stomach. It helps us emulsify or break down our dietary fats so that we can access fat soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. So it's very important to have this bile working correctly. But the problem is, if this food is not being acidified correctly, it can cause malfunctions here. So most experts are going to tell you that it's a hormone here in this duodenum, which is the first 10 inches of the small intestine. There's a hormone there called cholecystokinin that triggers the gallbladder to squirt this alkaline bile down. The problem is this cholecystokinin is triggered by stomach acid. So if somebody isn't making enough stomach acid, it's not going to trigger that cholecystokinin to tell the gallbladder to squirt the bile down there. Now, dietary fats can also trigger the cholecystokinin, and so can amino acids if amino acids come down here. The problem is amino acids come from breaking down protein. So if we don't have enough stomach acid, we can't break down protein. So the only way that amino acids are really gonna come down here unless somebody's supplementing with them and then do they really trigger this as well as food being broken down? I can't really say that. So we need acid here in the stomach to break down protein. So either the acid or dietary fats or amino acids are then triggering the cholecystokinin to tell the gallbladder to squirt this alkaline bile down. So let's just say that that's not really happening correctly. Maybe somebody's not making enough stomach acid. Maybe they're turning it off on purpose with a medication on a daily basis. Millions of people do that. Or maybe there's an overgrowth here that is alkalizing that stomach. In any case, if we don't have the ability to acidify that food, we're not really triggering this cholecystokinin. And then guess what? Remember, the gallbladder's job is to concentrate that bile. So if it's not going to be called on and the gallbladder is not sending this bile down there, it's just going to continue to concentrate the bile that is in there until it concentrates into sludge or eventually even into stones. So that can be why we're seeing such a connection between this like cholestasis issues where bile is not flowing very well and gallstones and gallbladder sludge and this overgrowth situation where we're seeing all this dysbiosis in all the gut and all that kind of stuff. It makes sense when you understand that, oh, we really need to acidify our food to trigger the gallbladder into action so that bile isn't just sitting there in the gallbladder and then creating all these gallbladder problems. So it's similar with the, with the pancreas, and the pancreas is right here below this. It's like a chicken tender looking thing, and its job is to put out some hormones that help us balance our blood sugar, you know, like insulin and glucagon, but it also puts out digestive enzymes that help us break down our food, and bicarb that helps the bile neutralize this acid that's leaving the stomach. So it's very important for these acids to be neutralized. We'll get to that in a second. But this pancreas is also triggered by cholecystokinin. So remember, we need all these things working correctly in order for the pancreas to work correctly. And if the pancreas is not being triggered or maybe some of this bile has sludged up and blocked the ability for the pancreas to release those things into the duodenum, that has the ability to create some pancreatitis issues by these enzymes firing in the wrong place sort of thing. They really shouldn't fire here. They should be firing down here in the small intestine. And when they're not, that has to be ability to create some inflammation if they're firing in the wrong place because everything's blocked up or not being called into action. Does that make sense? We need the first hammer to fall for these other steps to work correctly. So a lot of times it's not like, ah, man, my pancreas is broken. A lot of times it's that the pancreas is not being told that it's time to do its job. When we look at constipation or diarrhea, well, 
There's a variety of things that can cause constipation, but one of the possible causes is when this bolus of food that's moving through our intestinal tract has become too alkaline. It will move at a slower pace when that is more alkaline. And it's usually more alkaline either because it was not acidified in the stomach or there's some type of bacterial overgrowth putting out all of this alkaline waste that's neutralizing those acids, or maybe the bacterial overgrowth is further down the line in the small intestine putting out too much alkaline waste that's neutralizing all these acids and slowing things down. So as things slow down because they're overly alkaline, it has the ability to make that stool or that bolus uh, harder and drier and more difficult to move. So that's one common cause for constipation, but this also has the ability to create chronic loose stool issues. And there's other causes for diarrhea as well, but think about it, you know, if you, if you get a food poisoning issue, it makes sense. Oh, I have all this crazy diarrhea. The body's just trying to get all of these invaders out of the body so they don't create all this trouble, so it's just flushing things out as much as it can. Well, the body can also do that with like a low-grade infection, some type of bacterial overgrowth here in the stomach that has the ability to tell the body, hey, get this stuff out of here. So that's one possible cause of chronic diarrhea. And we also want to think about that when we're looking at this dysbiosis issue, where there's an imbalance of gut flora here in this large intestine, we have to understand that that's usually the case because they're coming from up here. They come in from up here and they make their way down to here. And they usually get in because there's a lack of stomach acid. So that stomach acid is not just there to help us acidify our food. It's the barrier to the whole digestive tract. So when bad guys come in on the food that we're eating, they're supposed to die in an acid bath in that stomach acid. So there's a wide variety of reasons that a person might not be making enough stomach acid, but when that's the case, now we have invited the bad guys in and they can move down here into the small intestine and eventually make it down here to create this dysbiosis issue. And if you want to see some craziness, just Google things that are connected to dysbiosis, health conditions connected to dysbiosis, and the list is going to kind of freak you out a little bit. In the description below this video, beyond these topics that I'm talking about, I'll put some other studies that show how this dysbiosis and this gut microbiome is so important, and when it gets out of balance, it has the ability to create a wide variety of health issues and diseases. Another thing to think about is when there's some type of bacterial overgrowth, it also sets up that environment for other bad guys to come in. And we get these like candida issues and other yeast, mold, or fungal type microorganisms or even parasites that are coming in and they kind of get to set up camp as well. So sometimes a bacterial overgrowth can create some other type of overgrowth or varmint that's coming in and creating all kinds of trouble. So let's look at these autoimmune issues that can come up. And a lot of these autoimmune issues are really not the body just attacking itself just for the heck of it, like a lot of people think. Some of these autoimmune issues have to do with the body's reaction to food that's coming in. So we have the ability to create these food sensitivities to specific foods. And then when a person eats those foods, the body goes to war against those foods. And then sometimes it kind of our own tissues end up in that battleground as well. But this is mostly coming about when there's like a leaky gut type issue. And I have some links to some studies that talk about this a lot. But basically, when the wrong type of environment comes in, and they have the ability to kind of change the permeability of this intestinal lining. They can kind of bore holes through there or make it a little bit more permeable. And this is usually caused by some of those more like yeast, mold, fungal, you know, candida type bad guys. But when they create this to be more permeable, and then this person is not making enough stomach acid or the bile has become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, so it's not coming down. If either of those digestive processes are not working correctly, we can't really break our food down into these elemental nutrients. So instead, they still have this food identity. You're not giving the body vitamins and minerals and amino acids and fats. You're giving the body like a chicken sandwich and the body doesn't know what to do with a chicken sandwich. So when these particles of undigested food make it through that intestinal barrier into the bloodstream where they should not be, then the body's gonna go to war. It's viewing those as an invader. So that has the ability to create a lot of these autoimmune issues, and that makes sense why they would be associated with bacterial overgrowth and dysbiosis issues, because it's usually all these bad guys in the wrong place, and the circumstances that let them in in the first place, that lack of digestion, that has the ability to lead to those leaky gut, autoimmune, food sensitivity type issues. 
So we also find, and you may be surprised to see, things like anxiety and other mental health issues are, can be associated with these overgrowth and these dysbiosis issues because a lot of these mental health issues come about from the body's inability to have a fuel source and all the minerals and nutrients it needs to function correctly. So we really need all of this digestive process working to get all of the nutrients and minerals out of the food that we're eating. And if we can't break those foods down correctly, we can't get all those nutrients out of it. So that's why it's very common to see those issues show up with some of these problems. Another issue is skin issues. When we can't break that food down, now instead of nourishing the body, we're giving the body a burden that it has to deal with. Like, how do I get rid of all of this junk? And another big thing is remember that the liver puts this bile into the gallbladder. But what a lot of people don't know is a lot of the filth and junk and toxins that the liver filters out of the body, it puts into that bile. And then when the bile moves through the intestinal tract to help us digest our food, it's carrying those toxins with it. And then the toxins go out the back door when we poop like a champion. But if this bile is not flowing correctly because it's become too thick and sticky to flow like it's supposed to, maybe because there wasn't enough stomach acid coming down and triggering the gallbladder so it just stayed in there and concentrated. There's also a lot of other factors that can thicken up this bile. But when it's not flowing, then all those toxins are not leaving the system. And now the body's like, well, how do I get rid of this? I have to call on like a backup system and I'm going to call on the pores and the skin. I'm going to push out some of these toxins through those pores and then when those pores get clogged up, we see a lot of wide variety of different types of skin, acne, breakout type issues. And even obesity can be related to these overgrowth issues because a lot of times obesity can have a wide variety of issues. But when you think about it, a body really needs these nutrients. And when it's not getting those nutrients, it's going to scream for more food. So now the person is eating a lot more food. They might need to eat four, five, six cheeseburgers to get the level of nutrients that another person might get from one cheeseburger. Also, if they can't digest their food correctly because of some overgrowth, they may find that they feel better when they eat processed junk, carbohydrates, and sugars because those are a lot easier to break down. If someone doesn't have enough stomach acid and they eat some healthy you know, steak and vegetable kind of situation, they'll have a lot harder time breaking that down and they'll feel much worse. And they also won't be able to get any energy and function like a human being. So they're like, oh, I'm going to have a toaster pastry. I feel better when I eat that. And they start to eat these foods and gravitate towards these things that have the ability to raise insulin and tell the body to store more fat. We also, when we're talking about detoxing correctly, a lot of people just... They deal with different symptoms even if they're dealing with the same problem. A lot of people, instead of pushing junk out through the skin and creating these skin issues, they'll store some of these toxins in fat cells to keep like a safe keeping and to keep the whole system working better. But these fat cells start to get more and more toxins and then they expand and then our pants don't fit. So obesity has a wide variety of ways that it can come about when you're looking at a bacterial overgrowth and a lot of these digestive malfunctions that it can create. So that's a lot of bad stuff that can come about and I didn't even list some of the more significant health issues that can come about. So you want to investigate that a little bit. But if you got anything out of this video, it would be, yeah, you don't want that going on. Now, usually it's starting here in the stomach. That's where you really want to approach things. We'll put a link in the description below for our videos on how to wipe out SIBO fast in case things have moved down further here. But when you're going to put steps into it, you really want to start here and wipe out anything in the stomach so that that stomach can start to acidify your food correctly and help you break that down. Plus, you want to acidify the stomach so you can close the front door. So, and a lot of times, you, it starts with wiping out the bacteria in there. So if you want to understand how to do that, you can jump over right now and check out our video on how to wipe out bad bacteria in the stomach. I can't wait to hear about your results.